Welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number one, gritting your canvas and more. Hi, I'm Matt Filio, if you haven't met me before, and I will be your guide to help you paint a portrait. That's your mission, if you choose to accept it, to paint a portrait you can be proud of. Uh, I've helped several artists do this over the years, and it's been a delight to be able to see many artists who have never painted a portrait in their life or have had very little portrait painting experience paint a portrait they can be proud of, paint a portrait they can give to a loved one or put on their wall and just enjoy um, or do commission portraits, enter them into art shows and win awards, all of those things. And no matter what your goal is, I'm here to help you to paint a portrait. So let's dive in, let's do this. Um, the first thing I'd like you to do is sign up for the Portrait Painting Challenge if you haven't already done that. Hey, it's completely free. You have nothing to lose, so go ahead and uh, why don't you, you join with other artists and I'll teach you how to do it. The, uh, the link to sign up is below here in the description of the video, but you can sign up at realisticacrylic.com forward slash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. Now, when you sign up, I'll send you a welcome kit and that'll include the reference photo with and without the grid, the supplies list so you know exactly what you need to paint along with us, all the brushes, canvas, colored pencils, different things to do it right. Uh, I'll also send out the uh, class schedule and then the palette layout guide so you can mix your paints confidently, know where to put them on your palette so that you don't end up with a muddy mess. And uh, yeah, I, I'd love to help you do that and so much more in this portrait painting. In fact, I'm gonna be teaching you the entire process step by step, starting with a sketch and all the way on to signing your painting. Now, I will have some additional bonus videos that will be available in the Realistic Acrylic Portrait School All Access membership. I'll tell you about that down the line. But for now, let's begin with a word of prayer um, then we can dive right into the lesson. Uh, Father, I ask a blessing on this first lesson here. Help me to be able to teach excellently, uh, clearly communicate to the students uh, what to do in this lesson, which will be gritting the canvas. And I pray, Lord, that you would give them confidence to know that they can do this. Uh, that, you know, like your word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Lord, I pray a blessing on them, no matter where they're at, you know, in their journey with you. I just pray that you would give them peace and confidence to know that they can paint a portrait they can, they can be proud of. So Lord, guide this process every step of the way, even if they struggle, as we all struggle. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd give them encouragement uh, through my teaching and through others in the group as well that would... Uh, just give them some tips on how to improve their portraits or just a nice compliment on their work. So Lord, bless this process in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the other thing too. When you join the Portrait Painting Challenge, you also are going to be uh, encouraged to join our Facebook group where you can have a community of like-minded artists who will cheer you on in your journey. And if you get stuck, and we all get stuck, right? They'll be able to help you show you some things that maybe you might have missed in the process and just encourage you on what you're doing well. We're in it together and it's my goal again uh, and it's our goal to help you paint a portrait you can be proud of and you know what we do with our gift that God has given us is we beautify the world around us and we create incredible paintings that we can be pleased with how they look aesthetically and we can give as gifts and it encourages the people around us. So anyway, I'm excited for this. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we're going to begin just keeping things very simple so that you can follow along and you know exactly what to do. And then we'll add a little bit at a time, make it very easy for you to follow. So there'll be some subsequent lessons here. We're breaking this up into eight masterclass lessons. This is the first of eight. But what we're going to do first is basically just grid our canvas. Now, that all being said, there is some prep work you could do now. This is optional. Just consider this like extra credit. You don't have to do it. Um, and if you are just beginning in the process, you're a beginner portrait painter or artist working with acrylic, you don't have a lot of experience, I would encourage you just to keep it very simple. 
okay and we're just going to grid this canvas these are canvases you can get um, at Michaels or Hobby Lobby or any art supply store just your very basic 16 by 20 canvases um, but if you want to be a little more advanced in this process I do have a link uh, in the description of the video that will take you to a portrait painting challenge from 2021 uh, where we do a little bit of prep work on the canvas uh, apply some gesso and sand it to make it just a little bit smoother so if you'd like to do that you certainly can and again that video will be in the description uh, of this video and, and linkable you can watch that and then after you go ahead and do that prep work on your canvas you can meet us back here for this gridding video but for most people i'm going to encourage you just to join just like this just grab your canvas you know take that plastic wrapper off set it on your easel and we're going to dive in just to keep things very simple and in fact i've done a lot of paintings too without any prep work it's still very possible to do okay so step number one step number one is to uh well even before we get into step number one let's just backtrack a little bit here let's talk about the supplies you're going to need for today i have that supplies list in your welcome kit but i want to just show you the supplies you'll need just for today's lesson and the first supply you're going to need the first item you're going to need is a gray colored pencil okay so uh this would be a prismacolor colored pencil um that's the brand i recommend you don't have to use prismacolor but if you use other brands um, you will not always get the same level of quality. Uh, so Prismacolor is a great brand. You can buy them. At, um, you can buy them at Michaels or Hobby Lobby. And this is a Prismacolor warm gray, 30%. Uh, it doesn't have to be warm. It could be a cool gray, but you just want a light gray. Okay, so that's who you're using for today: a Prismacolor uh, light gray colored pencil. If you can see the text on that. All right, so that would be <clears throat> the first item. And then you also want an eraser, okay? And this is these are just white cap erasers that you can get. Um, and they're, again, very easy to buy at an art supply store or an office supply store, your local Walmart, whatever. But just some white cap erasers. Um, you can stick that right on the end of your colored pencil, and that's going to make it a lot easier to erase. Um, now another item that you'll want, and I don't think I have this on the supplies list, I can't remember if I did, but you'll want a ruler. Now I like to use a 18-inch uh, ruler here, uh, works a lot better for covering more ground and gritting your canvas, uh, but if you don't have that you certainly can use a 12-inch ruler, just your standard foot ruler and that will work just as well. You'll just have to kind of uh, double up and move it over, you know, slide it up and down and so forth. Um, now, that's the other item you're going to need. Um, you will also want to have a pencil sharpener. Um, pencil sharpener like an X-Acto brand. I'll show this to you here. And this is going to work very, very well in keeping your pencils nice and sharp so that your grid lines are thin and not too thick and you don't have to press too hard. Uh, so an electric pencil sharpener works well or a really nice hand sharpener that won't crack the lead um, like a Prismacolor or something like that. They, they actually make their own brand of sharpeners designed for colored pencils. They do a much better job than your traditional pencil sharpener that's meant for uh, number two pencils. Okay, and then of course you want to have an easel so you can go ahead and place your painting on that securely. You don't want it flat on a table because that's going to make it very difficult to see what you're doing in proper perspective. So have an easel where you can have your painting upright and securely mount it. Um, and then last but not least would be your, um, your tablet. Okay. So I have a Kindle fire and I use that as, uh, basically for my reference photos. Um, so you want to have an iPad or a Kindle or something like that, or you could print out your reference photo too and just attach it to the left side of your image. If you want a great way to hold your reference photo, your, your tablet, next to your easel, I do have a free class um, 
that lets you know how to create your own reference photo holder out of cardboard, just household materials. And I have a little pattern for it um, and show you how to do that. I will put a link in the description of the video for that as well. So you can scroll down and click that link and take that course completely for free. And then you'll be able to use that for this challenge or any other project you're working on. So that's all gonna be in the first two parts. Uh, there is one more supply you're gonna need and that would be um, condiment container, like one of those little mixing cups. Very, very small, it looks like this right here. And this one actually had some stuff in it, but you can reuse them. Uh, you can get those at your local uh, Walmart or department store. Um, and they're just disposable mini cups, I think, or something like that meant for condiments. We'll use that for the matte medium and gesso that we're going to use to seal the grid in. And you'll also want a brush as large as you can, you can get, like a two inch brush or a one inch brush. I just buy these packs like this. This is a Royal Langnickel set, or you can use a uh, fine touch set from Hobby Lobby. But you just want to brush something like this that you can then use to actually uh, seal in your grid. Okay, so a one inch brush or a one and a half or two inch brush would work very well for that purpose. Okay, so we're ready to begin. Uh, again, keeping things very simple. And uh, just as a little bit of a, a touch point before we dive into the actual process, you might be wondering, um, is it okay to trace? Should I do this freehand? Now, this whole portrait challenge, let it not feel like a constraint, let it feel as a help to you. You, If you want to do this freehand, you certainly can. If you even want to trace it with a projector, you certainly can. I'm not gonna judge you and I'll be cheering you on all the way through your portrait process. Um, but I do teach using the grid method. Why? Because uh, it helps artists to be able to see proportions in a much easier way. Um, it gives them some guidelines, but it still kind of compels them to use their, uh, you know, reference skills of seeing an image and then accurately, you know, observing what they see and interpreting it onto the canvas, getting those proper proportions, um, you know, portrayed from the reference and onto the surface. And so um, it's just kind of like a halfway point between tracing and doing freehand. That's kind of how I see it. And it's, it, it works very, very well for beginners, but also intermediate and advanced artists can benefit from it too. So that's how I'm gonna teach it using the grid method, but you certainly can use whatever method works for you. So let's dive in here and uh, we'll, we'll take our ruler. So that's the first step. We're gonna create the grid. Now, I have the reference photo here and it actually helps to see your reference photo if you can set that up while you're even doing the grid. Um, not absolutely necessary, but it is helpful. And we're gonna be doing a uh, two inch grid. So we have a 16 by 20 canvas um, on our reference photo. Uh, we have uh, eight or 10 squares vertically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have eight across. And so that's going to correlate really, really well um, if we do two inch squares. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and begin measuring this out. Now we will have an inset area uh, where we're gonna have some more facial details. You can see uh, on the reference photo here, we've got actually squares within a square. So we further subdivide um, these two inch squares for one inch squares. We have four squares and one. And I'll show you how to do that after we get our two inch uh, grid set up. This is just to allow us a little more um, guidance as we do the facial features to really lock in those forms um, and having more squares can help us to do that um, rather than having a one inch grid over the whole thing, which can be very overwhelming visually. So I think this is gonna be a fantastic way uh, to kind of segue out of that and get the best of both worlds with our one inch and two inch grid together. All right, let's start with that two inch grid. 
Uh, so what you want to do is uh, go ahead and take your ruler and set it up just to the, the left of the canvas. Use your fingers to kind of feel for that edge. Okay, so you just kind of feel for the edge here. And make sure you have that lined up with the edge of the canvas. Um, there is like a little beveled area um, and you want to make sure that you're past the bevel and you're actually lining up the edge of this ruler with the literal side profile of the canvas. So that's that's a pretty important detail. I don't want to neglect that. So get it all the way to the edge, line it up by looking at it, um, and then you'll be able to begin. So we're going to start from the bottom, and we're just going to mark off two inches. Okay, so right above a ruler, make a little hash mark, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing above. Again, line that up. All right, there we go. Now, we're gonna want to go ahead and continue all the way across. So um, you can line this up, and we'll go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16, of course, is the end. Now, you might notice that it actually doesn't hit 16 inches on this. I don't know if you can see that. Um, the literal edge of the canvas is probably 15 inches and maybe seven eighths. That's okay. As long as you're going across and you're measuring it from the left to right on both top and bottom, you'll be absolutely fine. You get into trouble is when you reverse it and you measure um, from right to left on the top and then you know, left to right on the bottom, they're not going to match up. Your lines are going to be kind of kind of wonky and they're not going to be straight. So just make sure that you measure it the same way and you'll be just fine. So let's continue this process here. Um, so we have this all lined up with two. We'll go two, four. Try to make sure your ruler is parallel to the bottom, not at an angle, or you're going to have some, again, some lines that are askew. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just try to get it so that you see it straight across, flush with that, that canvas. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just put in our marks here. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. All right, so now we've got that. And we will go ahead and do some markings the other way. Um, so we'll go ahead and just kind of get this. Now I'm, I'm turning my head, and you might have to turn your head too with this, uh, just to make sure you got the ruler lined up flush to the bottom. Okay, two, four, six. Let's make sure we got this parallel here. Eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 is right there. And uh, that'll take us to the top. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, again, starting at the bottom. Get that ruler lined up so it's nice and parallel with the edge. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, so now we've got hash marks all the way around here and you can see you know, how this looks. We've got our lines all lined up here. And now the next step will be to go ahead and connect the lines, connect the dots, you know, not, not too hard at all. So we're gonna connect these lines together um, doesn't really matter which way you do it, but probably top down would be the best way to go. Um, so we'll go ahead and line these up and get your ruler just, uh, you know, slightly below, just slightly below. Let's just move that camera up a little bit. Get the, uh, yeah, the lines just slightly below. So we have the ruler slightly below the lines, draw a line across and try to do it with a nice light pressure. 
All right, so you just want to kind of barely see the line. Now you probably don't see the line very much here. Um, and it might be a little harder to see because of the way cameras work, they bump up the contrast. So if you don't see the line here, it is there. It's just very, very, very light. And that's how I want it to be. Make that line as light as you can because that, that'll make it easier when you seal it in. If your grid lines are light enough, you don't have to use much gesso in your mixture uh, for your sealing layer. Okay, so we just continue this process going across. Trying to keep a nice even pressure all the way down. Okay, I just gotta make sure that I've got that lined up. And you might find you'll have to sharpen your pencil pretty soon actually because it doesn't take much with the canvas texture uh, to have that pencil get a little bit dull. I'm going to sharpen it. Okay, we'll just continue this process down. Easy peasy, there we go. We're just keep on connecting these lines. Now we're going to do the verticals, all right? So let's go ahead and take our ruler, line this up. And uh, I do need to draw a couple more hash marks going across just because my ruler doesn't quite hit. So let's go ahead and just hop down one, two to the third square here. And we'll just draw some hash marks here, make them light especially because they're, you know, in the interior here and just go right across two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. All right. So now, now I can line up my ruler because my ruler wasn't long enough to span that distance across. Now I can take the ruler and I can just line it up here. Now, if you have a longer ruler that goes to like 24 inches, fantastic. Use that. 36 will probably be too unwieldy to hold. But now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Just use a nice light pressure. You might have to move your finger up to get your ruler to stay flush with the surface. And you can slide it up and finish the lines up. Let's just do that. It's a little bit trickier. Just add a little bit of that line up there. We're gonna continue the process across here. So again, just line it up here with your hash marks. Try to get it so your ruler is just on the edge of them, not on top of them, but just a little bit to the right of the line. Try to move your pressure and walk your fingers up makes it a lot easier. And we just kind of slide this ruler up, keeping it constant, making sure it's flush with the line on the bottom, and then just kind of finish, finish that line off. So you might have your lines a little bit askew, but when they're two inches apart, it's not a huge thing. We can use a little more precision as we get into the other ones, but try to make them as straight as you can. Uh, there is a little bit of, uh, you can have a little bit of deviance on it, but not too much. Okay, so here we go. Doing the third line. Just walk our fingers up to keep that pressure. And then we'll slide this up. Just kind of keep that constant. There we go, and connect them just like that. And I find I, I have to sharpen my pencil already. It's already starting to get dull. Okay, we'll go ahead and continue the process.
I will go a little bit higher here. Okay, so now you should have everything gridded off and this is, uh, this is what it looks like. From a distance here, it's probably going to look pretty white. Again, the lines are so incredibly light, you probably cannot see them. If I go in with my detail camera and zoom in just a little bit, you might be able to get an idea of what they look like. Um, you can see you know, how we're spaced uh, two inches apart and kind of how light they are. So that gives you a good gauge for what you want to do uh, with your own painting with your canvas. Okay, so that's what we have with this process. Now, our next step is to do that special inset for the detail on the faces and the hands. So if you look at your... So now our next step is to draw that inset. Uh, you have your canvas all done, and this is what it looks like here. Um, you can see how we have these lines at two inch intervals. So we have basically a setup of um, 10 squares high by eight squares wide. So that's what you're looking for. 10 squares high by eight squares wide. Now we're gonna put in that inset. And if you take a look at your reference photo, uh, you will notice that there is a little area in there that has more detail in it. Um, so looking at her face, we've got a series of squares um, basically subdividing them into one inch squares. So you have four squares and one. All right, so uh, one, two, three, four. And then we've got basically six of these squares that are subdivided into one inch squares. Um, so that's what we wanna do is subdivide our squares. Uh, we'll be counting off from the left-hand side here. Uh, we're looking at uh, one, two, three, and then on the fourth, and then counting down from the top, one, and that's going to be where we're going to subdivide it. All right, so um, on our canvas, let's just take a look at that, and this is what we're looking at here. Again, counting down um, across, and we can count down just one from the top, and then one, two, three, four. So this is where we want to start our subdivision. And it's not really any more complicated than what we've already done. We're just basically dividing all these squares. So uh, I'll show you how to do it. So just set your ruler up. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is, you know, make sure the line matches up. You've got it at the end of the ruler or wherever you know your ruler has that line indicating the end of the inch, all right? And then you're gonna draw a little hash mark above the one. Uh, your two should be resting just about, you know, where you have that grid line. If it's not exactly on it, it's okay. It just should be close, like, you know, within a 16th of an inch or less. Um, and then you can draw a line for the three Okay, so one, two, three, four would be the line we already have, so we don't have to draw that over. We're just basically gonna make two lines here going down, and then we're gonna have um, one, two, three going across. Now we have to have a connection point, so let's go ahead and move the ruler down. Um, and then you can again line it up by using the number two, the two inch area with a line that you already have. And we're gonna put in a line for the one and a line for the three. All right, and now let's go ahead and do the same thing. Again, get your two to line up with one of the existing lines that you already have. Um, and we're gonna go ahead, and we're pushing it more to the left side here so that it's kind of close to this uh, uh, third line, one, two, three, okay? so. Okay, we're gonna draw a line here for the one and the three and the five. Now we're gonna move the ruler over to the right and we're going to do the same kind of process over there. Get it close to the edge of that line. And we're gonna go ahead and draw 
a line on the one, the three, and the five. And that's a little bit off camera. Sorry about that. Just raise that camera up. Yeah, right on that five right there. Okay, and so um, with that, now all you need to do is connect these lines. So we can start actually with the top here and just draw across. Use that same light amount of pressure. You don't have to make it any darker than the lines you already have. Just draw right across, again, keeping your ruler below the hash marks, light amount of pressure. And then we can do the same thing vertically. And we'll just draw downward with this. Just two lines here vertically, three going across, two going up and down. Right, and so you'll end up with something like this. Now you should have, uh, how many squares would that be? Uh, six divided, multiplied by two, uh, or by four. I think you're gonna have like 24 squares if I'm not mistaken. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, yeah, so 24 squares now. Um, so that's the inset for her face, all right? That wasn't too hard. So now that you get that accomplished, you can go ahead and we're going to do the inset for her hands and the paint brushes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And actually I tell you what, let's just move this camera down first and we'll get that trained in on just the right area here. But again, you wanna look at your reference photo and observe where that actually lands on the reference photo. And you're looking at this area right here. So where are we gonna count? We're going to start with uh, looking at one up from the bottom, one, two, three. So we count one, two, three, and then one up from the bottom. And that's going to place us uh, one, two, three, and one up from the bottom. So right here is gonna be the start of that inset. Uh, so that's, that's where we wanna put it, right about here. All right, and again, we're gonna subdivide these squares. Um, and we're looking at creating, basically we're gonna go one, two, three, so it's gonna comprise this area right here. I'm just gonna move that camera up a little bit. So this whole area right here, and we're gonna draw a line going up, and then we're gonna be drawing three lines going across. Same process, we're going to just line up our, our ruler here, and we're gonna put a line above the one. We'll do the same thing up here. Line it up, you can use the two or the one, whatever is clear for you, get that one to be right in the middle and that's our first line then we want to draw the three and we're going to go ahead and uh, just get a connection point here so we have to draw a couple sets of lines let's get these all lined up here one three and five just like before one three and five all right, so again, just like before, put in that special little inset, draw these lines across, get them to, to connect, and you know, get them to be as straight as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but as straight as you can. Now let's connect the verticals. Doesn't matter what order you do it in, as long as you do it. Connect the verticals here, there we go. All right, it's a little askew, but it's it'll work. Um, but you can see how that, that all works together. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do the other side. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil quick. All right, so on this other side, we're gonna be counting, um, it's gonna be going basically straight across and mirroring 
the other side. The only difference is, whereas this inset is two squares away from the center, uh, one, two, and then there's the inset. On the other side, it's actually going to be uh, just one square away. All right, so but we can kind of mimic this, and I suppose in retrospect, I, I probably could have just drawn the lines here and connected them, but that's okay. Uh, let's draw a vertical line, and we'll go ahead and measure that starting from the top. Get this lined up here so we've got the two on that edge, which is putting it right in the middle. And then we'll do the same thing, lining that up so the two is going with the line. Put that line in the middle. And then we'll go ahead and draw our other ones. And we actually probably can just uh, connect it with these. And I'll show you how to do that. So you only have to draw one set. Um, let's go ahead and get these lined up so that we have the two lined up with the line here. Two lined up with the line. Okay, one, three, and five. And then we actually should be able to line this up with the ones on the other side. But you just make sure you only draw it going into uh, one square. This whole, this whole inset is only one square wide. All right, So we're just starting at this point right here and then going across. So now we'll do the next one. Going across. And then the next one going across. Again, lining it up with the line over there and then lining it up here. And then we don't want to forget the vertical here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and draw that line as straight as we can. And there we go. Uh, so this is what it all looks like with the inset here. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick scroll through with the camera. So you can see what we have. All right, so we've got this set up here, inset right there, doubling those lines, actually quadrupling them, but we basically just bisected them. We just uh, doubled them up here. Uh, so we have 24 squares right here. And uh, then down here at the bottom, we've got our inset with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, I guess, yeah, we have 12 on each side here. So we have these two insets here. Um, so that is what we're looking at. That's what you want to create. Um, so again, you can look at your reference photo and see where it occurs, but I think that all makes sense here. Hopefully the way I've explained it and demonstrated it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. It's a little bit different. We've never done a uh, gridded canvas with an inset before, but I think for this one it's going to work really well, and we'll be that we'll be glad that it's there. So after this step, now you know you make sure you got your canvas gridded off nicely. Um, then you want to seal it in, and that's step number three. So let's go ahead and seal in our canvas. And now on to step number three, which is to seal in the grid. You've got your grid completed, it looks good, or it looks good enough. And we can go ahead and put a layer to basically um, prevent our grid from smearing or being erased along with the sketch. Because as you put the sketch on top, and if you find that you have to do some erasing of the facial features like I do, you will end up erasing your grid with your sketch and then you won't exactly know where you're at. So I like to put a barrier between the grid and the sketch, and that's what I call the ceiling layer. Uh, not like the ceiling above, but we're talking about S-E-A-L-I-N-G. Uh, so to do that, we're gonna take um, our small cup, that small uh, condiment container. We'll take um, some gesso and some matte medium. Now you don't wanna use titanium white. Make sure you use gesso and matte medium. Gesso has that flat finish to it, that little bit of a tooth that's very necessary to do a sketch. If you use titanium white, it has a little bit of a gloss to it. It's going to make it very difficult to sketch. 
So if you follow this method here, you're going to have a fantastic time sketching using colored pencil the way I teach. <clears throat> so make sure that you use gesso and matte medium. Don't use gloss medium. Don't use fluid medium or gel medium, satin varnish, any other kind of medium. Use matte medium. Just remember, it's just like my name, <clears throat> only it does spell a little bit differently. Um, but matte medium, again, like gesso, dries to that flat finish. And when mixed together, it's going to give you a fantastic surface to sketch upon. We need a little bit of that gesso uh, just to kind of knock down the grid lines just a little bit. It's going to make them a little bit lighter because we want the grid basically to just barely be seen. We don't want it overpowering. We just want to be able to see it well enough so that when we do our sketch, it's kind of like a ghost image behind what we're sketching. We want the sketch to really stand out. So we're going to, again, mix matte medium with gesso. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, you also want to have a one and a half inch brush or one inch brush would be fine, a two inch brush, but something like that. One, one and a half, two inch flat brush for applying our mixture. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll take a little bit of gesso. We'll start with that first. And we're going to pour that into or pour that onto a spoon. Now, if you have a, a bucket of gesso, you can just dip your spoon in. And if you don't have a spoon, just use anything you can, a uh, wooden stir stick or the end of a plastic utensil, whatever you can. Uh, I try not to use any metal utensils out of my wife's drawers in the kitchen or that gets me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and I have to sleep in the doghouse or sleep in the studio for a while. We don't want to have that happen. Um, but here I'm going to take uh, just a little bit here of this mixture and I'm just going to basically pour it in just like I just want to get a little bit on the bottom and this is to control the amount that's going in and maybe I could put a little bit more on the spoon because it's not pouring in very well let's get a little bit more on there something like that and then we'll go ahead and just get a little bit on the bottom so I don't have an exact proportion but I would say a proportion of maybe a uh, ratio of two parts um, gesso to you know eight parts matte medium so something about like that will work and then we want to go ahead and we want to pour some of the matte medium into our mixture so you can go ahead and pour that and we're just going to kind of fill it up maybe about oh halfway two-thirds full something just about like this Okay, and I have a little whisk that I use. I got that for one of my students. <laughs> and I'll just use that, this mini whisk, to stir the mixture. Now, you can use a higher ratio of gesso if your uh, grid lines are, are darker. You could actually, um, you could actually use a 50-50 mix. But my, my grid lines are pretty light, so I'm just going to use something where we have a little more matte medium and less gesso. So now that we have this, we can apply it onto our canvas. Um, and we'll go ahead and just dip the brush in just like that. Get it nice and saturated. And we just start to apply it. All right, so we'll go ahead and start from the top and just work our way down. Now this actually isn't making a huge difference, so I you know, probably could add a little more gesso to this mixture, but um, again, my grid lines are so light, I'm going to, I'm gonna keep it at this ratio because I want you to be able to see the grid lines when I sketch, so it's okay. But basically, um, it should be, your mixture should just kind of soften up the grid lines a little bit. So we're going to brush it with a light amount of pressure. 
and we brush it back and forth, back and forth, but on the final strokes, we just go kind of straight down. And with that, we're kind of smoothing everything out. I have a couple of little hairs that got in there. And I like to pick those out. I just use the bristles to do that and then pull them out with my finger. And that's really an easy way to do that. If you ever get any bristles caught in the edge of the brush, you can just kind of pull them out. But let's go back to this. So again, we don't need to overbrush it, but we're just going to continue on adding it right to the top here. Oh, and I got a couple of pieces of old gesso and that, that'll happen sometimes too. You'll get little flecks of old gesso in there. You'll just kind of have to pull them out using the, the edge of your brush. It's the best way to do it. And then you can wipe it on your finger or a rag. All right, so we just go from left to right, top down. And again, on that final stroke, we just want to smooth that out. Smooth that out. Okay, even pressure going all the way down. Now we're at about halfway covered here. We're just going to continue and get that completely covered. You want to kind of get let your brush start, not at the top, but kind of part way down. Okay, so maybe about a third of the way down. And then you're going to brush that all the way. Okay, we'll just, again, kind of smooth this out using light pressure at the end. And just some long strokes to smooth that out. Okay, we'll continue on. It's going to make a mess, potentially. I tend to make, <laughs> I tend to make a mess with what I do. I always have. As a kid, I mean, I would be getting spaghetti all over my face and maybe that's why I'm an artist because I can get paid for making a mess. <laughs> but, you know, we do actually make something beautiful out of these messes, don't we? All right, let's smooth that out. There we go, light pressure, light pressure all the way down. Okay, so when you look at your canvas, you don't want to see drips. You don't want to see big grooves of paint in there or gesso. Um, if you're using Liquitex or Nova Color, matte medium and gesso, they're very fluid and you shouldn't have to thin it out with water. It should go on beautifully. But if you use a different brand, you might have to add some water first to thin it out because you really want to get this mixture uh, to a nice consistency. You want to get this uh, kind of uh, like a warm honey mixture. That's about the consistency you want. So this is good. We don't have a lot of waste. We just basically use that up here. Um, you could do a second coat if you want. It's not necessary. Uh, one coat really will do the job. Um, now I'm just going to set my brush here in the rinsing container and just kind of swirl that around, get that cleaned up. And then I'll take that over to my cleaning station later to actually rinse everything out properly. But that's, that's basically all there is to it. So now we have the canvas set up here. We've got the grid on there. We've got the inset and we've got it sealed in. What you want to do is let this sit for about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your environment, how humid or how dry it is. Let it dry completely so that when you touch it, it's not cool. If you touch it and it feels cool, that means it's actually still wet underneath. But this should dry relatively quickly. It's a thin layer, uh, 30 minutes to a half an hour. It should be completely dry. And uh, if you want to be extra sure, maybe give it one more hour. You should be able to sketch on this uh, within two hours without any problem at all. Um, but I'll be sketching on this after the next day, so no worries. Uh, just make sure it's dry before you begin the sketch but let's not get ahead of ourselves we're not going to do the sketch until i teach you the next step and that's going to be coming out very very soon so as i record this it is tuesday i hope then to have the lesson where we teach you how to sketch it coming out on friday in the next few days looking forward to that so uh, we're going to have a great time doing an accurate sketch 
And with an accurate sketch, we can do a fantastic portrait, just like building a house. We get that good foundation in there and it makes everything so much easier. But hey, give yourself a pat on the back. If you got this much done, that's an accomplishment. And now you have a good foundation to build your sketch upon. I'm looking forward to seeing your progress on this portrait. We're gonna do it together, you and me and all the other artists in the group. So let's enjoy ourselves. Let's have a good time and just leave it up to God and just enjoy the process. All right, you can do this. Uh, God bless you. I look forward to teaching you the next step. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, leave them in our Facebook group. I encourage you to go ahead and take a picture of your, your progress and post it in the Facebook group and said, I created a grid. Um, that, that way we can have some accountability. We can enjoy what we've done uh, because it's all a stepping stone to creating a beautiful portrait. All right. I look forward to helping you with this and God bless you. We'll see you in the next lesson.